Why is open networking critical to telcos? Here we are at the OpenStack Summit in Vancouver, where the news is there's now 90,000 people in the OpenStack community from 180 countries. But I guess we should first ask what exactly we mean by open networking. Gabrielli, do you want to um, give us your interpretation of what we mean by open networking? I would say that uh, networking is undergoing transformation mm -hmm. with software definition, so there are multiple different layers and there's a need of uh, standardization to happen across the board from control plane, data plane, and you know, uh, all the different aspects of networking. So I think telcos have uh, actually been a big uh, uh, proponent of uh, uh, standards you know, since ever in networking specifically these days. So, so let me uh, jump in there as a representative of yeah. telco. Uh, I'd say that we've been moving away from just standards. I mean, that's been sort of traditionally how we've, how we've done it and moving more toward open source. Um, uh, and I'd say that change has been very rapid over the last two, three years. Uh, so we actually have a stated strategy of software-defined networking is, is our platform of choice. And Joseph, what's Intel's and, take? And it's important to have moved from standardization to create communities and define those APIs and make sure that we all develop software and we access those APIs and we program our data paths in a way that, you know, everybody can access them in an open way. I so so that's even, important. even though we, we've got a lot of different groups and projects going on, it's all about communities and co-working and not working in isolation either, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, we can't. Yeah, I agree. In fact, um, uh, what's actually refreshing I found in the last couple of years, the uh, operator community much more mm. active in... Uh, you know, if not standards, but actually uh, interoperability aspects. Uh, so not anymore a vendor-driven community, uh, which can be biased in a way or another, but operators taking a central role into this. And we have seen OPNFV, we have seen all these communities, and yeah. telcos are actively there and they're contributing. I think that's, that's really great. And that's something that's actually changed for us because uh, that's been a mindset change. You know, five or six years ago, we were sort of still waiting for the vendors to tell us what they were going to do and then we'd argue about it. Um, and now we're, we're realizing that we have to be proactive and we have to say, okay, well, this is what we're looking for and, and we can't use the vendors as the brokers. You know, we have to talk to our, our fellow telecom yeah. people to, to really present a united front. And also give requirements well in advance, so yes. you give them before you have the actual product. And one of these communities and forums is OpenStack, yes. um, as we mentioned earlier, hugely well supported. But how is OpenStack actually being used in the telecoms business now? Well, OpenStack is a uh, clearly open, uh, both cloud infrastructure manager in the world of cloudification. I think is having more connotation from the early rise of, let's say, network function virtualization but now in whatever it's happening right now, you know, movement to uh, edge, big word <laughs> these days. Uh, I think in OpenStack, I think not just evolving in a uh, distributed fashion, but also moving up the stack in terms of how to enable additional automation capabilities as well. Yeah, and Joseph, you mentioned uh, earlier um, um, OPNFE. So how does OpenStack play with, with NFE? So it's a um, critical component, I think. Um, you you need to be able to control your your platforms and you need to be able to uh, control your data plane the same way we said that those APIs need to be open. Now, here is OpenStack that you can actually push the buttons and look at your screen what's happening. So I think um, that's that's one of the key components actually. And I would say for from the telecom perspective, all the telecoms have stood up pretty significant OpenStack um, uh, clouds. And um, uh, the original idea was to kind of compete against some of the cloud providers. I think none of the telecoms are doing that. They've all sort of said, no, we, you know, we'll let the cloud providers do what they do. They're really good at it. Um, and none of them are running OpenStack for the most part. But what we're using it for is our internal infrastructure. Um, and of course, we're doing it at the edge as well. So so for us, it, it provides a single platform across, you know, down into the core where we are supporting our, our traditional OSS and BSS type applications all the way out to the edge where we're, we're delivering services to our customers. 
And is it ready to support the, you know, the critical requirements of NFVI? Or do we, do we still have a bit more work to be, to be done? I think there's been a lot of uh, maturity happening in the last years, especially in the last couple of years. I think we will still see more maturity coming, but uh, even if you see an Open Stack Summit, we're discussing now how to uh, scale up, scale out uh, new functionality, and um, I would say not necessarily uh, uh, complete new features, but the uh, maturity of existing features, which I think it's, uh, it shows about a maturity curve on a different way. Also, exposing more features from the platform, that's yet another thing that we're on the good track. There is a lot of enablement there. We have uh, EPA, uh, we, OpenStack can understand basics of the platform. Now we need to enhance it even more. And, and Beth, you mentioned um, how it goes into a telco's infrastructure, the heart of internal operations. Can we bring this out to um, the whole orchestration of, of, of services when you've got legacy <laughs> networks and virtualized additions? It, it seems to the outside observer it's a, it'd be a heck of a mess to, to control. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's darn hard. It's absolutely true. Um, but we're, we're doing it because we recognize that it's an evolution. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, yes, we can't throw away our 40 year old systems. We're still using them. Uh, but we're also, you know, we're not investing in them anymore and we're really moving toward better tools. And I'd say where OpenStack really can mature more is better tools. Uh, you know, it's a mature platform. There's, what's it, 10, 10 million cores out there that are running OpenStack. So, you know, obviously a lot of companies are relying on it for their core services. But the, the tools, particularly around the edge tools, they're, they're not quite there yet, and, and you know, yeah, we're working and, and on it. I agree it. with Beth. Um, <laughs> it's not just about raw technology, raw functionality, or uh, new projects, but uh, moving into an environment where, especially in the telco operator world, uh, operations is a very large aspect. So tooling for operation and automation. So you mentioned orchestration. Mm. Uh, a lot of things happen in there. Uh, I would probably... Um, use more the word automation because there's a connotation in how to you actually all the way to deploy and the complete life cycle. Uh, it's a much broader topic to discuss. Yeah, and, and, and in the telco world, zero touch provisioning is a different meaning than it does within the data center. When, when we look at the OpenStack community, and this summit's an ideal opportunity to, to do that, you understand the, the, the breadth of coverage of, of OpenStack through enterprises. It's, it's huge, and, and telcos is a, is a part of it. It's by no means the dominant part, it's a, it's a part of it. Um, how confident are you that all these requirements you've been talking about and the tools that we need to develop within OpenStack, that we can, we can, get, them, we can get them through the, the, the process and we'll, we'll, we'll be able to shape OpenStack or part of OpenStack to meet specific telco requirements? I, I, I think the tel you know, OpenStack's been around for nine years now and uh, it's come a long way. I've been in part of the community for eight of those nine years and uh, I think I have every confidence that that will happen and uh, because I think the telcos who, who are very well represented at, at this conference have come to realize that you have to step the, the plate and you have to tell people in the community what you want. <laughs> I'll go even further. I would argue telcos have a, uh, taken a lot of interest in OpenStack and are able to shape a lot of these uh, requirements, and which is actually very positive because telcos traditionally have uh, some of the most stringent requirements, right? Whether it's performance, whether it's availability, whether it's, you know, uh, again, uh, networking as well. So um, we actually see Delco have a very important role. Uh, of course, enterprises have other requirements as well, uh, but um, I would not say that Delco is one part of the requirement. I think Delco plays a key, key in a central right. role in, uh, in an open stack community. And many of the requirements, uh, for example, some of the more fine-grained uh, support for role-based access control yeah. and security, um, yes, the Telcos are driving that, but the enterprise needs that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the reasons why, for example, we are investing in uh, uh, specific telco enhancements. We believe this will bring maturity to a product and then this will actually be beneficial for uh, the remainder of the other customers as well. So how is this all changing the traditional 
telecoms ecosystem that, that has served us well for a lot of years, um, and yet we're now seeing shifting, shifting dynamics, shifting forces. How, 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 would you th how do you think that this new ecosystem will, will, will plan out with, with open networking? Are we going to see more reliance on open source projects, bare metal, etc.? I think we live in an open source world. Um, developers have realized that you can do so much being on your own. Uh, and companies the same. Um, I think it's it's the time where um, everybody is coming together to, especially when we need to have standard APIs, that's yet another reason to come and collaborate. And then we can define those APIs quicker than before, agree on them quicker than before, and then the battle comes to enabling those APIs. Um, to me, uh, I think this open commit just fosters innovation. Uh, uh, warning though, uh, it's important to make sure that then the software becomes mature and then supported because uh, there's a critical success factor in making sure that this can actually be operated in production, especially in the career world. So innovation on one side, but uh, I think it's very important to look at the actual uh, life cycle of how to take it yeah. to maturity. Although I, I would say I believe that the telcos are becoming more tolerant of open source software, mm -hmm. and and you know it used to be that we would you know we were willing to wait three years until it was completely hardened, and you know we just can't anymore. So you know we just deploy it. <laughs> so th this is how it's changing the ecosystem. But um, a, a final question to you all. Will it change the shape of CSPs and telcos as we know them? Um, it seems to be an enabler to move to the digital service provider or what have you model. But do you think this will give the impetus for a number of telcos to become you know, the open telcos, a new way of thinking? Will it change cultures of telcos? I think it's the opportunity and a risk. Um, as you mentioned, digital, everybody talks about digital transformation and everything. I think telco went through multiple ways, right? Yep. You know, I think maybe combination of 5G and digital software qualification. I think it's a huge opportunity for telcos to uh, change pace in terms of the type of services, the time of introduction of services, partnering with and federating services among other cloud providers. Uh, the risk is that if they don't take this opportunity, they might be uh, losing some ground versus their competitors. Well, uh, although I, I agree with you on that, but, I, but at the end of the day, our customers expect pretty close to 100% SLA, and that's not going to change. So the culture that supports that kind of high operational efficiency can't change. Now maybe we'll use different tools and we'll think about it differently, but it's still going to be a highly efficient operational uh, uh, model. In terms of operation, for sure, uh, you need to, to keep the high standards, but I feel that at least at the development side of the world, mm. it has changed dramatically, has, Telcos. Yeah. Because, again, Telcos in the old way we're Waterfall. expecting, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're now they're active it's, it's and they're agile. pushing, yeah. as we said before. So I think it has already changed the, the mentality, at least on the development side. And not just in the network, but even in the creation and composition of services. Mm -hmm. Start to look at how to reach inside and outside of the network and being able to consume services across. So um, again, let's see how it shapes up. We will indeed, and it's moving very, very fast, so it won't take us long before we uh, see how it's all moving on. But for now, Gabriele, Joseph and Beth, thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.